Okay, so it's morning now. Gary hand pollinated, I gotta be careful. But I don't think there's any bees, look at that. He hand pollinated this last night, but there's no bees. So for whatever reason, it's warm, the sun is out. There's no bees there, and then we've got that one. And let me see if I can get back down there. Mm, I don't see any bees. Oh, look, we have a fruit. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. Oh, wait a minute. We have more than, we've got a few fruits. Oh, there's a fruit there. And we have got a fruit here, two fruits there. And I don't know what else. Get, I'll tell you what he did. Let me tell you what he did. Let me back up. I'll share with this with you. He's working on a project. So he built this thing, or I think he built it a while ago, and it's got his bags of cement in there, and he wants to finish that project there. So I can't hike down here. I'd have to slide down the hill, go around, and try to get back here. Normally, I used to just walk. Now, the other side, I'm going to have to try. The hill is really deep. And I'm going to see maybe with a hiking stick I can get down there and then I can get back there. I should try. And then I want to see what's back here because we've got a lot. But all this is going to be if all takes. And I hope they, they do. Now, this is from a couple nights ago. That's a good sign, but we'll have to wait. You want to make sure it starts to grow. But there's like three here and, of course, three here. You've been watching it. But this one will be closed any time now. I'm going to start screaming because they fruit beetle just flew by my head. Oh, I just saw a bee. I guess the bees are coming out now because it was early and I just, oh, here they come. Okay, so what's going to happen is one bee is going to check it out and then after the one bee checks it out, he runs back to the hive and does his little dance and go, guess what I found? We have to hurry really fast before it closes, before she accidentally knocks it off. And then they'll come and they'll bring all their family and friends, including down here, because I'm trying to do this without dropping. Oh, here. See, this one drooped already. So this one is, they won't be able to get into, but they should be able to still get into that one. I don't think it's nine o'clock yet. It might be. But um, they usually shut by nine. They say they open anywhere between nine at night until nine in the morning. And then once the sun hits them, it's a very, very delicate Look, it's like tissue paper almost. See, I just tore it by touching it. It doesn't matter at this point because this is going to droop and fall off anyways. But it's it's such a very thin, delicate, uh, probably doesn't, it's like probably like an orchid. You don't want to really even touch it. Like I said, it doesn't matter at this point. It's been pollinated. But the sun will just droop it and then it just smishes down. Literally, look at that. And then in a probably... It's hard to say. In a few days, a week, it will just dry up and fall off. And then you end up with what you see down there. Oh, actually, see, they still have it on there. Look at that. Which is probably better. You don't want to pull it off. You leave it. See, there's, you see the flower on the end? They're still attached to the fruit. They're close. Now, when Gary starts to wiggle those, if they come loose, then they're done. You don't want to force it because you can't pick them and then wait for them to ripen if you pick them too ripe. So you wanna make sure you get them right at the right time. I should get down there and tool it. Nothing's eaten them, which makes me think that though they're sweet inside, it must not be attractive to other pests like rodents and stuff. Because we haven't had any eaten while they're on there. And see, there's more there. And that's a good sign. That one's kind of a little swollen on the bottom. Let's walk over here real quick. It's kind of an update on what's going on on the dragon fruit. And then let's see. Oh, look, I just hung this. My mother gave me this. And it was a little birdcage with a plant. And I opened it up, put a wire there, and the birds have been going in and using this attached to my purple sprouting broccoli. Okay, see, this was pollinated a few days ago. And see how it's kind of just, it's just falling apart. I don't want to mess with it because you probably should just leave it on. You don't want to take it off. But it right away the sun just dries it up. I would I would compare the flower itself, not the species. Don't come back and say, oh no, you're wrong. I'm gonna compare it to an orchid. It's that delicate. Where it you know how an orchid goes brown right away, you're really not supposed to touch it and mess with it. Well, that's the way this is. And I see ants. See, there's an ant there. I don't know if you can see the ant. So that's it. So that's the update. 
we should know, I would say in the next week or two. And then of course, you know, if these are going to turn into fruit. I think we're going to have a lot of fruit, so I'm not worried about it. He's been coming out every single night, and then he's got his down there he's been doing. And keep in mind, my plant here has been growing here for probably, I'm really bad on time, I'm going to say at least four years now. So it's just, just, it's happy, it's established, it's in a pot. It's kind of growing like that. See how that Malabar spinach is and sprouting broccoli? The pot is partly buried and it's got big holes on the bottom. Well, it's back here and we cannot get in there. I do not think I can, might be able to get you in there a little, let's see. It's back there and it's sent off a whole bunch of arms and tentacles all over. And it, as you can see, it's coming through my garden, but it was so bad. And it was coming all through here that I told them, you're gonna have to chop a lot of it off. You can see it back there because I'd be working with my lemon verbena or something and you know it's got little thorns on it. So he chopped a lot off, but mine itself, has, the root system is at least, at least four years old. And now his, I don't even think his is two years because it wasn't that long ago. Might've been last year. I told him to just chop a whole bunch out and just take it. And he said, well, he'll just plant it in his yard. So see, I see the bees flying but they're not going really to the flower, so the flower may not be giving off any essence for them, so they're missing it. It might be way past its prime. I would think they would have gone in there and looked around, but I don't see them. I know that we, I, I have seen them in the morning, and maybe when it's not past its prime, they load in there and then at night, I've seen them at night when they open just before nine. I had one the other night open before nine. I even saw a bumblebee go in there, which was really, really cool. And then the bumblebee went in there and the honeybees came and they kind of shushed them away. It was like, this is ours, go away. All right, well, that's the update. And now, like I said, without climbing back there, you got to see, literally holding this, that I have got, there's a ladder back there, we do have fruit that obviously took. Now, I think he pollinated those, he said, in July. So we're getting close to picking them. They ripen anywhere, they say, from six weeks, and it could even take up to three months sometimes. I think a lot of it is the type, the fruit, how good the plants established, the weather, because they really like warm weather. And remember, if you've got dragon fruit, though they look like a cactus, they actually need a lot of water. That's why I like putting them in a pot. When I have them in the ground, even in the ground in a pot, if I fill that pot up when I'm watering, there is no way I'm gonna miss that plant. You water next to a plant, that's, I don't have anything directly here, but if you water next to the plant, and if let's say ants or a mole or something had made a tunnel, what happens is you water the plant, and though you think you're watering let's say this is a plant and you water it, it could end up taking it off in another direction and you just don't know. So that's why I really like the pots because the pots make a big, big difference. Yes, it's a little lizard. There's two of them. There's actually a pair that live here and they sit here on these stepping stones. It's so funny. So that's why it's really good on some plants. Even if you're not gonna grow in the pot, open the bottom up or at least a lot of it water the pot and you know that that plant is getting it to its roots. What happens afterwards, it doesn't matter, but it will go directly to the plant. Otherwise it could leave. So let's put it this way. I may not have known anything about dragon fruit when I stuck it in there, when my friend gave it to me, gave me a piece. It was like one piece, that's all I had, just a little piece. I stuck it in a pot and the first year, nothing. I said to him, I don't know if it's gonna live. Oh, it takes time. And the second year, it just took off. So it also depends on its, you know, how well it's established. So make sure you water your plant really good. And if it's not in a pot and it's directly in the ground, just be sure that the water is getting to the roots and be sure you water it every day if it's summer and hot. Look, look, oh, he just, look at this. He's, he is eating ants. Look, look, isn't that cute? I love them. He's got an ant on him. He can't get that one, but he's gonna get it. He got it. 
I think he turned around. Oh, there's the other one. See the other one? There's his friend. Okay, that one's there. And then we've got that one here. Look, look, look. Let's see if he's going to get it. Oh, he got it. So we're sitting here watching lizards, a pair of lizards, eat ants. Right in front of me. Isn't that cute? I love the lizards. They really get a territory. Look at this. And it becomes theirs. Oh, he just ate another ant. Let's see what the other one's running after. They're very territorial. And when they pick out a spot that's theirs, that's what they do. They sit there and they stake it out. And they stake it out even if I'm here. They want to make sure they let me know that this is their territory. See, I'm right here. In my old shoes. And they're buddies. If they were not buddies, if another one comes by here, they will fight and these two will chase them off. They look like a young pair. Yeah, it looks like a young pair. When they get older, the males are bigger and their blue on their belly is very, very dark, deep blue. And the female's usually a little lighter. But this, this is probably just a young pair. Cool. Okay, now I've wasted your time with lizards. And I'm going to let you go. And I just wanted to give you an update on how all the dragon fruit are doing. And I'm quite happy with that. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.